Hello, it's me, Nancy, today. Okay, I'm going to give you the state of the house tour. All the things that have been changed since um, our flood in the winter and our crisis. We got in the electrician and the plumbers and carpenter. And I did some stuff myself. So we will start with this room. Okay, now this is the guest room. It's a mess, but now we have a fan in here and we have a switch that does the speed from there as well as turns it off. And the light for the fan is now here. This still needs to be fixed behind it. This window is new in case you didn't know, it has to be finished up and put in, um, you know, trimmed and all that. The trim around this doorway is new. Those holes are new. Those had to do with this fan. This light fixture is new. This is the same window, but it's rotting on the edge, so it will have to be replaced. Okay, and then over here, we have all this has been worked on and replaced. So there's a, a light here now that goes for this. Okay, this we have trim around the edge, which should have been put up here, but wasn't. So that's the way it goes. This broke off, but I can stick my fingers in there to do it. And in here... Sorry, this is the loft, and it now has a switch down here, and it turns on a light, and there is an outlet. We built this loft so that we had a place for Abraham to sleep at one point. It's a window. This all was put up here as storage later. We won't look at my mess. Just take it for granted. It's a mess. I have to put a step of some sort there to get in and out easily. Okay, and so that is the loft and that room. Now, the bathroom. This now has a switch here that turns on the light, which is a new light. And have a mirror, another mirror, a new sink, a vanity, which is really lovely. But you know, the sink, I couldn't have them put the sink in the middle because it would be, um, it would be too far over to the toilet, right? So I had them put it here and then this was in the way. So I cut the side of the drawer out because the plumbing was too close to it. But it works perfectly there now. This door needs to be turned. It's opening on the wrong direction. There's also now a heater in here with a thermostat. We have a new toilet. The last one had a crack. It's got two buttons here. You flush, you push this one and it gives a big flush and push that one and it gives a small flush, I believe. This is the same. You turn this on for the fan. That hasn't changed, but over here we now have an additional plug, a GFI plug, right here. That had to come up to put this counter in. We also have new fixtures here. The bathtub is the same. This is not finished mudding, but we have a new color in here. It's pinkish. We have a new shower rod. And this over here was not finished. This doorway, it was just open here, but this is being mudded and sanded and it's now closed in on this side too with room for the tiles there except that's not finished in I don't know how that's supposed to go but anyway so there we have it then in the hallway we now have a working switch that turns on the light down there and another switch that turns on the light up here this one is a two-way switch it's from there too. 
So those are good changes there. And then in the bedroom, this used to be a very small window. Actually, the window matched this window. You see, if I go like that at my arm's length, well, you right here, oh wait, put you right here at my elbow and that's how big it is, not you at my elbow. And you can see that, well, I don't know what you could see. Anyway, so this is a bigger window. So we have a view down below. We don't just see the sky. It was up higher and it was smaller. We also now have a window here and a window here and we, a new fixture here. The slight switch turns it on. And then up here we now have a, f a new window. I'll come and get them. What? I'll come get them. So now this one, this turns on this light, I mean the fan. This turns on the light for the fan. And then this uh, is uh, the those, those things there. Um, okay. well, anyway, Makes it go ready? faster. And we took out the top of this loft because the fan was so close to the top that it wasn't working. Um, for we couldn't get up there and do anything up there. So now it's going to be bookcases up there, I think. I'll just have bookcases on the sides. Have to figure that out a little better. Okay, so there's the upstairs. The state of the house. Bye. Hello, it's me, Nancy, today. I wanted to show you, um, I didn't really want to show you anything. What I wanted to do was complain, but that's not a very good thing to do, is it? So I will instead explain. This is an update. <sighs> Excuse me. Our grass has grown so high and so thick, and so many things have happened that have not been fixed up. And I guess, um, just looking out there, some of the flowers are blooming. I'm in my car looking outside at the, the perennials and such. Some of the good things are blooming, good things being my, my flowers. I see a daylily up on the hill. I have not been out much this summer as far as sitting in the garden or wandering through it. The mosquitoes are just so amazing. The air is alive. See, I got stuff uploading on the other camera as well. See that? There's me. You'll be able to see that one soon. Not long left. I know, that little cover is kind of weird. Right. We've dug this area out a little bit here so we have room for two cars side by side but as you can see that car is kind of on an angle so that side needs to be dug out more. The sand hill is made of sand. I'm not sure just what to do with all the sand. Also I have, we took down these posts that were in the way so that we couldn't make it this wide. And, you know, in the winter we're not going to have this much room to put the car side by side. We need to move over more. We have um, lily of the valleys here that I've never seen them bloom or smelled them when they were blooming. See that post there? That post has to do with the uh, what we took down. And then I trimmed, one day I trimmed all the lower branches. I left climbing stumps on those trees so that our grandbabies can climb up them and have fun in the trees. But these branches were supposed to be taken over to the other side in there to increase our uh, privacy, but I didn't get them there. And then the 
teepee over there fell down in the winter, and we've been using the boards from it for renovating the house. One at a time, all those two-by-fours are disappearing. But I have to put those things there. And these tires that are right here should go over there, too, in that teepee. But maybe that teepee should move. I don't know. I don't know that there's much left of it now. It was a place to keep all of my um, harvested things for making baskets. Some things are over there, but not much. Also, one of these hammocks I found started to rip when I sat in it, so I thought that should come out. So I have to go down there. and It's hard to untie that. I have to cut those <sighs> and over here we have a big mess I brought the second table over which I shouldn't have brought over I didn't need that over here and it I never used it but it's been very hot or it's been humid with mosquitoes mostly it's been hot and humid the humidity is not so bad I'm okay with the humidity it's not the same as Georgia I guess 97% humidity right now, but because it's only 21 Celsius, which is about 70, it's not that bad. It does, the air doesn't hold as much water at 21 Celsius as it does at 36 Celsius, which is about 100. There's something over there by that bench, and I don't know what it is. Anyway, so I thought I'd have Abraham move all these branches, but he hasn't really been in a helping mood. You know how that is, I guess. So I guess I'll have to drag them through myself or ask Willem to do it. He might do that for me. And then, of course, the perennials. This has not been mowed. It looks really terrible in there. I need to get in and mow it. Some of it was mown. But I should mow it before the flowers show up, because then I'm mowing around my beautiful flowers. Better to do it before they're here. I did see there's one way over in there. I don't know if you could see where I'm pointing, but there is a daylily over there blooming. And there's one down at the pond, too. Okay, so there we have it. Now you know the situation from here. I'm in my car. You know why I'm in my car? This is a good one, because there's too bug many bugs out there. I turned on the air conditioning in here because I like the air conditioning when it's kind of yucky outside. <sighs> okay, I'm thinking about you, Janet, sitting there outside painting in your mountains. I'm thinking about somebody else making a basket. I did start making a basket the other day. Oh, here comes this... A uh, chipmunk. I think he's going to run down this pole, this piece of wood. It's on the on the logs. Well, maybe he won't. Maybe he sees me in here. I have a whole pile of wood in the teepee that needs to be burned up. I should do that. I should clean up the teepee. Make it nice in there. I went for a walk down to the pond to check out this beaver that was there yesterday. He wasn't there. But there were bugs. Lots of bugs. There were deer flies and mosquitoes and black flies. Is that enough for you? It was enough for me. I haven't laid in my hammock up there at all because it's so much bugs. Hmm. Well, that's the situation from here. You just keep smiling. If you're not glistening, you're not hot. Hello. Well, so what did you think of that pole dancing? <laughs> I bet you didn't think you would see that on Nancy today. Yes, indeed. Fat lady dances with pole. <laughs> anyway. Hello. It's, it's Nancy today. Coming to you today from the Situation Room, which is the car, because that's where the situation is happening at the moment. So I have a word to say to you about pancakes. That's right, I'm going to eat my 
dried food. But I talked to you about pancakes. Because I know you're not supposed to eat with your food mouth full. It's very rude. Did you know that a gravel pit, if you leave a gravel pit alone, it'll get covered with grass and weeds? And that's part of the thing about when they dig a gravel pit or a mine, that they sort of say, well, yeah, we're going to cover it over and make it look normal afterwards. Well, as much as you can make a hole in the ground look normal, nature will do that for you. It's right. I bet you didn't know that. I bet you didn't know you wanted to know that. Now, back to driving with one hand. Do you ever take your hand off the wheel, one hand off the wheel, to maybe scratch your head, check your glasses, maybe perhaps do the radio, check the mirror? And um, how is that dangerous? I don't know. I guess with distracted driving, people are now texting while driving, which really means taking your eyes completely off the road, putting them down here in your lap, because you've got to hide what you're doing. It's now, you know, off to the side somewhere, I don't know. But you can't hold it up here and, you know, be doing like that, because where you can see it, because then the police will see you. You've got a big ticket. But, you know, I've been a distracted driver much longer than they were doing texting. I've been a distracted driver for, well, since I was about 15. I went to, went to California and I put a hymn book on my, on my um, steering wheel and I learned all the hymns in the book. That's right, I did that. That's from that other book, uh, Double Your Energy and Live Without Fatigue. That's an amazing book and it taught me not to waste your time. When you've got a few spare minutes, keep your mind working. Use your mind. Read poetry. Memorize poetry. Memorize another language. There's the mailman. Do I have time to go back and follow him around? He's turning around. That's the end of his route. Interesting. That's not our mailman then. No, it mustn't be. He drives with this. He's got a car with the steering wheel on the other side. How did he get that? That's pretty cool. Not everybody can get the steering wheel on the wrong side. I mean, it's not like England is just down the road. It's across the pond. Speaking of ponds, I bet Daniel is still flying. I bet he is. He left yesterday morning at 10 o'clock from Ottawa, which was, you know, it would probably be a couple of hours to get to Newark, and then he'd probably have to wait for a bunch of hours. And then his flight from Newark to China is 19 hours. So say he left China, or say he left Newark at 2. That's a really bad number. Say he left Newark at noon, which he didn't because he couldn't have gotten there and gotten that, done that fast. But anyway, so if he left China at noon, noon plus 19, is that what it was, 19 hours or 16? Well, let's say 20. Noon plus 20 hours will put you at... 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 8, 8 o'clock the next morning. So, 8 o'clock the next morning would be like 2 hours ago, 3 hours ago. So if he had to wait, so he might just be getting to Shenzhen right now. He might be landing in Hong Kong. I don't know if he's flying to Hong Kong or Shenzhen. Probably Hong Kong. It's probably easier to get a flight to Hong Kong and then it will probably... I don't suppose you have non-stop. Oh wait, I think you have to go to Shanghai. Or what's the other big city in China? When Daniel got here, he was really amazed at how beautiful it was, how green, how clear the air was, and how fresh it was. How the air didn't smell like smoke. They put dried strawberries in my my trail mix. So yesterday was Canada Day. And um, it was incredible fireworks. We were all going to go to be with Daniel, go to the big city, go to Ottawa, do the fireworks. 
Abraham went with Ben and Tess. They did the big fireworks. You really have to leave your car somewhere and then take the bus downtown because you can't get there any other way. Then after the fireworks, it takes hours to get home. You're lucky to get home by 1 o'clock even though the fireworks are over at quarter after 10. I think they start at 10. They're 15 minutes long. Burn up a lot of money in really fancy fireworks. This is a dried kiwi. Is that what it is? I think so. They just blowed me right up, you know, 50 pounds extra. Amazing how half a pound, a quarter of a pound of pancakes can do that to you. There are three pancakes. Oh, and then I asked for, can I have another couple of pancakes? And she didn't bring me two more pancakes. She brought me two more plates of pancakes. Or waffles. Yeah, I said I wanted a couple of waffles. So they came out, these big waffles. I mean, once I've wrecked my body for the day, I might as well just do it up. Don't you think? <sighs> oh, I have one hand on the wheel. Do you think I'm going to be safe? There's no traffic on this road very much. It's pretty straight. My father used to put his arm out the window when he drove. And then he put the other hand, he put his wrist up on the steering wheel. And I could never see how that was safe. But anyway, we never had an accident. There's one thing about being a good driver. When I took driver's ed, they taught you about defensive driving. And I think that was the best thing. Hey, he waved at me. I think it was the hat. I don't know him. But um, defensive driving is anticipating what the other guy's going to do. And sometimes, you know, they are really cooked. Those folks out there that get in their cars not like me. I got good standards of being able to drive properly. You know, I had all these black, there, I have no hands on the wheel. Oh no. I have these black um, bug zappers. I thought I had three of them. And we cleaned up the porch and asked Willem to put them where I said to put them. And I have no idea where they are. Can't find them anywhere. there's a beaver in our pond. What the beaver was doing in our pond, other than eating off the bottoms of the cattail. You know, the bottom of the cattails are really good. I can see why he was doing that. Cut them off right at the ground. Why don't you eat it back about that far? Really good. And the piece he leaves, if you pull the inside piece out, the inside piece is good for another that far. here. Oh, where's my tweezers? They're gone. <gasps> Where would that be? You know there didn't used to be radios in cars. That's right, there were no radios in the cars. When somebody decided he was going to put radios in the cars, everybody laughed about that was the most hilarious thing you could possibly do. Because at that time, radios were big old whopper things. And so he made a small radio, put them in a car. You had to crank it up without a key. It's a real in 
interesting dust devil there. It almost looks like a whole little thing of bugs. Who are the bugs about today? So bad. We've got mosquitoes and black flies and deer flies all at the same time. And what are they trying to do? Feed their families. Why can't they feed them somewhere else? You can't even see that there's no traffic. There's one car on the road other than me. Oh, make that two. Okay, I better get off the blower so you can go about your life. Finish your coffee. an addiction. There's a, a whole world is addicted to coffee. Can you imagine if there was ever a coffee shortage? Or no coffee? What if it got a plate? The whole world would have a headache and nobody would be able to get up before noon. Well, you heard it here last. State, state of the state of the situation from here, and you can do this at home. Results may differ. Good morning, it's Nancy. Today, well, we're in Toronto having a temple time. Yesterday, I didn't uh, wasn't a temple worker. I was a patron. I got to go and enjoy all the. the sessions, the endowments and things. I really needed that. I think today I'd like to do that too. Just attend all the endowments. I feel I, I it's a better experience for me when I need it. I'm so grateful we found a place to stay last night. We have a friend, Linda. I guess the Montreal temple is closed and so people from Montreal are now coming to uh, Ottawa. No, we're coming to Toronto. So there's not a lot of um, places to stay if lots of people come and stay over. Luckily, our friend Linda had a cancellation. So we could stay here. Isn't this a beautiful dress? And a beautiful hat. It's so pretty wearing this. And then I have her flowers behind me. Isn't that nice? She lost a tree from the ice storm. They had an ice storm last winter. Well, we were in Georgia around Christmas time. They had an ice storm in Toronto. It broke a lot of trees. Life is good. It's hard, but it's good. The important thing about life is to think about the positive. Don't think about emotional stuff. Don't let it get you. Don't let yourself get sucked into having lots of emotions about things. Oh, just let it... <clears throat> just stay mellow. Mm, it's especially important not to um, not to hold a grudge. Holding a grudge is like drinking poison and hoping and waiting for the other person to die. It's not very real, is it? I've been thinking about the state of the house. Good old house. I was thinking perhaps, um, you know, Abraham needs a, a bedroom that's all his. The room that I love upstairs used to be his. And so, that's probably the one he feels most comfortable as a bedroom for himself. <sighs> hmm. And I've changed it all around. 
He's got his desk as an odd one now. I was thinking I should probably give him back that room. But then the bedroom downstairs is not very light. I'd have to take out, put some more windows in there. You can see where this is going. Indeed. But the one downstairs, you know, it has the door to the back with all the greenery. It's so beautiful outside. I think that's why I always go outside into the greenery because it's more beautiful outside than inside. But upstairs, it's more beautiful inside than outside. I have to consider all of these things. Maybe replace the window, the both windows that are there, and put in big windows. That might just do it. More work. More money. Not finished with all that's being done already. Anyway, those are my thoughts. I have iMessages on my iPod. I think it's nancytoday at gmail.com. You could add me if you wish. I'm also Nancy Today with two A's on Facebook. And I'm always glad to meet new people and make new friends. I've had such good experiences with all the friends of you that I've met on YouTube. But meeting in person is really an awesome thing because then the name come, becomes alive. Otherwise it's all writing. Well, there is phoning that goes with it. Anyway, you take care. Have a lovely day. Bye. You can do this at home. Results may differ. And that's the situation from here in the Situation Room. These are clematis behind me. Aren't they beautiful? Boom. Oh. So, ta-ta. Good morning. It's Nancy today. Look at this. I have on a necklace. I never wear necklaces, but I thought I just would look good with this. Uh-oh, keys. I have them. <sighs> I'm gonna be late. Darn. Oh, it's so pretty today. So beautiful. Oh my gosh. No sense ever feeling down when it's beautiful outside. You can do that in the winter when it's not beautiful. <laughs> Want to see the stream? Let's go by the stream. Let's go by the pond. The stream. I have forgotten about the stream most of the time, you know? You know, we have a bird that lives here at the stream. It's a indigo bunting. No, indigo. Is that right? Indigo bunting? Yeah, it's a little blue bird. Bright blue. And we're off. Well, you know, the other day I was sitting in the chapel in the temple and I was feeling lonely. I was feeling like I wished that somebody was with me. Somebody to sit with me. But there wasn't anyone. And I was feeling lonely. And then it occurred to me that if all of you who have told me that you love watching my videos and that you love me and that you feel like we're close friends, if all of those people were with me, it would fill the room. Wow, that's so cool. And so I didn't feel lonely anymore.
it's really important to have this camera and do this because there are times when I am alone, well most of my life I'm alone, and ooh, it's good to it's good to be able to remember that there is someone out there. And when I'm talking to you on here, I had to close the windows because they were going to blow my hat off. We can't have that. That can't be. I'm late. Time goes so quickly. I'll never make it in a half an hour. Darn it, I'm going to miss the sacrament. Unless they start the meeting slightly late, which is a possibility. Sometimes that happens. So today is Fast Sunday. Let's talk about fasting. Fasting is physically very good for you. In the church, we fast without food or water, food or drink, for 24 hours. And then we share our testimonies. If you have started fasting the day before, so that your fast and your 24 hours are up at the end of church, when you would be eating lunch, if you do that, then you find yourself in a spiritual place not connected to the earth or your body that much. You're just, it lets your mind and your spirit kind of float a bit. I don't mean that. I mean it elevates your outlook. So you th see things from a different perspective than all tied up. told me that they wanted, oh, I was going to stay on this subject. Have I got anything else to say? I, it's really hard for me to fast. I don't usually fast. Well, I'm always fast. Every week, every month, always. Me, I'm too connected to food, so I don't do it. That's my only reason. Sometimes I do, and then I feel so good about having done it. best if I just haven't gotten around to eating till late in the day on Saturday and then I just say, well, I'm going to just not eat. And then, of course, you have to start with a prayer. And, and then you break it on the next day. The world looks a lot better out there when you're out there in person instead of looking at it through these windows. These windows don't do it justice at all. Maybe my glasses. Yes, indeed. My glasses are also dirty. But life goes on, doesn't it? It goes right on, whether or not we're wanting it to. This morning I thought, if only time would lengthen. If only I could just push a stop button on the time and I could just enjoy things. Like, for instance, I wanted to do a bunch of stuff on the computer, release my feelings onto my journal. And then I wanted to, um, I wanted to go for a walk, and I wanted to go walk and observe every flower, and film every flower, down you go, and smell every flower. Look at that, you're still filming. Stay put. I wanted to do so many things, but, but time was passing and I looked at my watch and it was already three minutes later than I should have already left the house. So I did get my life. 
And then, not only did I not leave then, I had to go get my laptop, and I had to get my hat, and I found my necklace, and my shoes, and then I had to take the laundry out that was in the washing machine, because it had been in the washing machine since Thursday. But luckily that ran with bleach in it, and it didn't, it wasn't moldy. It was amazing. And so it had run with bleach in it because it had been moldy smelling, and so we had to put it back in there again. Anyway, so I put that in the dryer. I didn't put any new laundry in because I had limits on what I was going to waste time on. I should really get in a kayak. You know, you can just enjoy the beauty so much in a kayak. I enjoy it. things. These are the figs I planted. Remember the remember the irises? I just dropped them all on the ground. Look at that. Same on this side. I did nothing more than drop them on the ground. Oh, I hear the indigo buntings again. There's one right there. Female there. And what's over here? Is this also a female? Let's see. Oh, there's the male. And um, this is the yellow throat. the indigo over here. I see some grasses moving. There are lots of chipping. Okay, so anyway, I get a little sidetracked. So we've got the irises and then these figs. Planted all these lovely fig trees because they said hardy fig. Zone 7 to 10. Well, you know what? We live in zone 4. So I guess they're going to have to come in in the winter. And then these are the azaleas. Got them for three bucks. Golden, golden light Cecilia. And 
And then all those spent lots of time planting, sticking um, willow in the ground last year. And so all along here they're growing. Can you see them? Those are the willow. And then they come along the edge here. Oh, there's one way in there. These frilly little leaves. Now under here, there are also some here, but the tarp is on top of them. them in the little ditch there so they would have more moisture. But I think I should plant more willow along here again. These are doing very well. Look at this. Last night, if you'll remember, I came out here and I picked all of the blooming daylilies. It's a white admiral. So this one is about to bloom today. But already, these are blooming today. <laughs> you have a faint smell. This one might open today. Aren't they beautiful? The trick is to appreciate them all day. The pond is beautiful.
Now I really should have willow along this edge over here, I guess. Beaver comes in here to snack on cattails and leaves them laying on the ground. I think I should build a, a big um, sound barrier fence. That would take a lot of work. No, I did plant willow along here somewhere. Yeah, right at the edge, I guess. It's just all going to turn to grass. This pond is so beautiful. Good morning, it's Nancy today. Well, I'm already back from the store. I went to buy stuff. Our builder, our carpenter was supposed to come today, but it does not appear to be here yet. Anyway, I bought these are for the trim for the outside of the windows. And these are more boards for the bookcases I'm going to build. Probably got too many of them. And this trim is to finish the windows upstairs. And then under that is a window. I got a window. I thought that I would replace the window in the weaving room with a bigger window so that it'll let light in. Gotta go face the music. Willem's here. Look at him. There he is. Hello, Willem. Hello, it's me, Nancy, today. Shall we go down to the pond? I've got to see the our day's day lilies. Oh, look. My husband is down here. My sweetheart, look at the lilies are blooming. Let's go for a little walk here and see them.
Yeah, well, I was going to come home. Well, that's a good idea. I wonder what those bugs are. You did? Is it warm? It's kind of a cold day. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Wow. So pretty. This one was yesterday's and I missed it. Oh, or did that one? That one was today's and I missed it. Oh, dear. Look at this. I missed these, too. It's already closing up. I just love these flowers. They are nice, aren't they? They are. I'm so blessed. Wow, so lovely. I think I'll take this. How are the bugs? Huh? How are the bugs? Uh, the bugs. Uh, there was one here fly that was zooming around my head, but I got rid of it somehow. I didn't follow me. Got to appreciate these before they close up tonight. My little dock. They smell so good. I'm going to take these over to anchor it, okay, Willem? I'm going to go to anchor it. Okay, okay. Bye. Bye. Love you too. She'll appreciate them. Good morning. Well, is that what I'd look like today? You know, I think I singed my hair when I was burning that campfire yesterday. Because the ends of this are really bad. Anyway, also being in here with all the um, cutting drywall off and such. I think I... Anyway, that's... <laughs> what a way to start a video. Good grief. And I don't look good in blue, do I? But it's warm. I have my long sleeves on. It's a chilly night morning. Guess what? Yesterday, we put a window in the... Um, in the weaving room, in the piano room, the library, whatever you're going to call this room. Look at this window. Comes right down to here and goes way up to there. And see what you can see out the window? It's amazing. I just love it. So I put my chair here right beside this window. I can glance out, but you know, as I'm looking at, I'm thinking I should have put it six inches lower. <laughs> it really is a little too high for when you're sitting down in a chair. <sighs> hmm. Anyway, just wanted to show you this new window. I'm gonna have to look at myself. 
much to take a shower. That would get rid of all this stuff in my hair. Or I could swim in the pond. That's even better. So Dale's coming back today. It's Saturday. I don't know why he works on a Saturday, but I guess he must like to work. Must need the money or something. But he's coming back today. We're going to put a window in the upstairs little bedroom. Because I don't have enough of the house wrecked. So I have to wreck some more. Willem has been doing a good job at fixing all the little holes in the plywood. You know, this here, all those wires there, they're supposed to be behind the wall. And I don't know why they're on this side of the wall. Why are they not put in the wall? It doesn't make much sense. Why not just cut that drywall out, sink them all behind it? And then they're they're closed up. I have no idea, but that's what I would do. And I think I shall. Not a problem. Alrighty, well there's. <laughs> There's my really scattered little video. I guess I should go down and look at the indigo buntings. I love filming them. They scatter them. They flip back and forth everywhere. They're so cute. Anyway, so... Today's Saturday. Something in July. Look at how much these trees have grown. These little trees. See the tops? Hey, it's not cold anymore. And my flowers are starting to bloom. It's quite nice. I'm very blessed. I suppose you're very blessed too. I'm glad I have this chair here. Anyway, isn't this an amazing window? It's four feet by four feet. I'm going to put my loom here. So I could weave. Anyway, take care. Let's go pick our daily daylilies, shall we? Those are really a miracle flower. I planted them, but they've done that by themselves. Well, now you look like a regular daylily, a field daylily. Aren't they beautiful? Priscilla's rainbow. By tonight, they will be dead. So I'm going to appreciate them all day. I should mow the lawn.
mine turned upside down. These are beautiful purple ones. It's called tarantula, I think. I get the ones at the pond later. Hello. I thought I would try jumping on the trampoline, but I can't even get myself up off of it to bounce. There's another one of my little trees that is coming along. That one and this one. Maybe this is just stretched out and that's why I can't get up off it to bounce. One, two. Ooh. Yeah, it's all. Huh. I was up this morning. I stayed up most of the night watching heroes. And then woke up at 10. A little late. But I've been out taking pictures of the flowers. July is flower month. Everything blooms in July. I think I just saw a monarch. It's the first one I may have seen. He stopped at the milkweeds. This is quite good for my ankles, bouncing like this. I haven't been on a trampoline for a very long time. Hello, it's me, Nancy, today. Well, I was going to tell you, I have an idea. What about if they were to put windmills along interstates where they're always very busy the wind generated from the traffic would certainly turn the windmill well there you are on the floor again I don't know what's so interesting about the floor sticky up here but the 
here do you want to stay? You're going to go down again, aren't you? But you run here, I guess. There. Anyway, do you think that's a good idea? Now you have one set of lanes are going to this way and the other set are going the other way. So um, that would give you a circular effect. I think it would be an, an excellent idea, actually. You're down on the steering wheel. done today. Sitting in my chair. It looks like a pillow. I can't know this is like a sheet. It is a sheet. Anyway, um, I wanted to tell you something. Uh, but I forget what it was. Maybe I didn't really want to tell you something. <sighs> Sheep are out in the field. You can't see them, I suppose, but they're out there. And the, the field is so deep, you can just see the top of their backs. They haven't been out there much at all, probably because of all the coyotes we have. I haven't heard or seen them. And then I've got this bird feeder right there. Can you see the bird feeder? It's a little bit... Um, difficult to see. Anyway, you might have seen it. Anyway, we've got some chickadees coming and yellow warblers. And I have my window right here that I can open and I can look down and see the beautiful flowers. So today is a new day. Charging is not supported with this accessory. Well, hello, better support it or it'll go dead. 
So I have to get my car e-tested. You have to do it in Canada every two years. This is the year. So I guess I should go get it e-tested sometime. I went back to bed this morning. I've been really messing up my sleep numbers, the times of day I sleep and when I'm up. I stayed up till 5.30 the other morning watching. That's why I slept in today. So I went to bed at the regular time, which is around midnight. Then I got up at 7.30 and I started doing stuff online. And... Oh yeah, I was gonna... I was gonna... Um, upload this. Huh, couldn't save changes. What is that about? Well, anyway. Um, so I was doing stuff till about, s well, 7.30, I guess, or 8. And I went back to bed. And I slept till 11. <laughs> Look, oh, it's 12! So Willem's gone to town. He's got to go get his, um, on your birthday, Canada's birthday present to us all is that we have to renew our license, our driver's license and our car registration. It all has to be renewed on our birthday or by our birthday. So that's such a birthday present is that if you didn't do it, you don't get to drive anymore. <laughs> do you know I went all the way to Georgia without a registration, a car registration? I had no idea it wasn't in my glove compartment. But they sent me a new registration because I have to take it in to get an e-test and get a new registration. And so now I have a registration. But you have to pay $10 if you lost your registration. $10 if you lost your registration. Hey, I just got a phone call about um, um, do I want a free trip to the Bahamas. A free inclu all-inclusive cruise to the Bahamas. Of course, it starts in somewhere where, like Miami or, you know. It's Fort Lauderdale, somewhere that you're almost there by the time you take your cruise. So you gotta take a long plane ticket, or I can go when I've finished with my mom. Maybe I should pick up uh, uh, Vanessa. She really needs a break. She could go on a cruise with me. <laughs> when we turn that cruise ship upside down, ah, ah, we'd have a great time. Yes, indeed, I think I should do that. I asked Willem if he wanted to go, and he said, well, I said, but you might get kind of bored. And he says, yeah, I probably would. Yeah, he would. So, Vanessa, I had to answer four questions to get this. They asked these qu strange questions. Which is your biggest concern? And I don't know if they knew I was Canadian or if they thought this was American or whatever it was. But anyway, the four questions, which I'm assuming are Canadian, were... Did you, what do you think is the most important, the economy, immigration, or unemployment? Would that be the same as the economy? I said immigration because I really think we get so many people immigrating that, um, the, I mean, I'm an immigrant too, so who am I to say? Everybody's immigrants, so who are we all to say? But I think that we're getting so many people from countries that are kind of anti and they're also kind of, um, um, their laws are much different than our laws. So they, they come here and then, and they've got a lot of gangs over where, they, you know, people, these war-torn countries, they've been used to fighting all their lives, so they come over here to peaceful Canada and they start their gangs and la 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 la. Anyway, so I said that, is my teeth dirty? <laughs> you don't need to know that. So I... It's been like check. Oh, mm -hmm. there we go. Um, so I think the the immigration is the number one. We're letting so many people in that Ottawa is no longer Ottawa. It's like a capital of other countries. There's three countries that it could be capital of now. Used to be you'd walk down the road and it was all Canadians. Anyway, no no longer that way. And um, the second question was if you, uh, there were a few things. One was um, if you, a small business, a uh, home, home based business, would you want to know more about how to do it? No, not really. But I thought, well, you know, why not? But you know, I think the reason I got asked all these questions is so that they can more perfectly figure out 
uh, what kind of telephone calls to send me, you know. I'm on the do not call list, I hope. Anyway, they got through. And then there was another, there were two more questions. I wonder what they were about. You know, I should remember. I mean, it was only, what, half an hour ago? So, I got my free cruise, and then they said, press 1 to talk to a, a consultant or arranging the dates or something. And so I pressed 1, and then the line finished. That was it. It said, press 1 if you wish to speak to a, a travel consultant regarding, you know, uh, booking your dates. Goodbye, thank you for talking to us. And that was it. She was gone, and I had pressed one, but nothing happened. Because she was busy saying goodbye. But then I did get another call, and it tried to... You know how usually you get two beeps that try and break into your call? I got about five. But I wasn't going to talk to whoever was breaking into my call. I was busy. I was very busy. I don't know what I was busy doing. I was talking to somebody. Who was I talking to? Whatever. You know what? I figured out why when you go out our driveway, our driveway's level. When you go out it, there's this big dip down to the road. And I couldn't figure out what have we done to our driveway to make it so much higher. I don't think we've done anything. I think all this stuff that we did with the sand didn't, I mean, that might have made this much difference, if anything. But I think what's happened is when it rains really hard, we got this washout that was about, I don't know, a foot and a half wide and a foot deep. Out, just off. In fact, there were two of them, I think, and there was a little ridge in between. And in front of the driveway. But when the grader comes up the road, so we've now lost this huge amount of, of soil, of gravel. And when the guy comes up the lane and, and grates the road, he just smooths the gravel that's there. Well, now there's not as much there, so I think that's why it's lower. So I was going to call the township. And get right on that. Let me see if I could put that in here and see if I can get that number. Hmm. Anyway, so I'll phone him up and I'll tell him. Oh, services. It contains a wide variety and it looks like the word irrelevant. <laughs> it contains a wide variety of irrelevant information about the so I think I need to get the services. Oh, no, I don't. I need to... Whatever. You don't need to know this whole stuff. I got the roads committee, wherever the roads thing is. So we've got accessibility administration. In, in Canada, there's the Accessibility Act. So everybody has the right to every building. So any public building needs to have accessibility. You can't have stairs without having a ramp. And you can't have hard to open doors without having a push button that opens them. Which is great, because those doors are always too hard. Public works. Look, we have animal control. Accessibility, administration, animal control, finance, public works, and tourism. Okay, roads. There we are. Roads. Road maintenance activities. Gravel resurfacing. May, June, and July. Calcium, class 4 and 5 gravel roads. Class 6 roads do not receive calcium. June and July, that keeps the um, dust down. So, roadside grass mowing, July. Always ready to cut down the, just in time to cut down the monarchs that are living on the like, milkweed on the roadside. Roadside brushing, various locations throughout the year. Grading, varies by traffic volumes, types, qualities of road base, Moisture content, rainfall, and presence of calcium as required. Winter maintenance activities. I'm sure you want to know this. So today is July 5th, 16th, 17th. So check out the flowers that are in bloom today. Yesterday, I missed them. I didn't come down. I can hear, oh, there he is. Up. No. It's a blue jay's way up at the top. That little tick, 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 that's the indigo bunting. Whatever.
Which aren't open all the way yet. Oh, that was yesterday's. That's it. Yesterday's. That was yesterday's. That might be today's. Oh my gosh, there's a big turtle in the pond. He just vanished. He's about seven inches across. Lots of activity for so early in the morning. I like my little dog. And this is the end of the day, ladies. I'm going to plant willow down here, but I think maybe I should plant it on the other side. I already have it on that side. Good morning, it's me, Nancy, today. just had a wonderful little experience. The township people are coming and they're going to put in a new culvert at the end of our driveway. Because right now the road is washed out so low that it's a hard time getting out of our driveway all the time. The road is a lot lower than the driveway. They're going to put in a ditch to get rid of the water it properly, I guess, so that the, the water doesn't keep taking out the road. The guys here is missing a Well, I'm going to go to White House Perennials because you know me. I just have to check out all the perennials. I'll take photos of them. I want to find out the names of some of my perennials. Thanks for watching the ads. Good morning. It's me, Nancy, today. You can't really see me very well, can you? Except when the light shines on. I wanted to say, I have a word to say. Darn it, I forgot it. Oh, hoarding. The desire to keep things for years. I time that oh look at the beautiful deer oh, and a fawn aren't they beautiful mama oh there's another one aren't they beautiful look at the baby so sweet. I wonder if I feed these deer. A little baby. Oh, isn't that adorable? It's not a family. The, f the males are separate. This is two does and a fawn. Isn't that lovely? Well, 
we're outside again. There's that super moon. You wouldn't be able to see it. It's pretty far away. But it does look much bigger still. Well, let's go down to the pond. I want to sit. I want to play my violin. Look at the flowers. Check out what's down there. I have to put up some birdhouses down there. These flowers should come all the way across, shouldn't they? I want to put these banners up. I guess I could put them onto the trees. so blessed to have such a beautiful place. We're going in there, but first, we'll check the stream. And the indigo buntings. I didn't bring my zoomy camera down, though. This was all poison ivy and it was it was cut. And there was a little boy that was climbing down there. I need to kill all the poison ivy here. Let's take a photo of this side of the stream.
I need to get a haircut. Here come the neighbors. You hear that little cheep? That's the indigo bunting. Every four seconds they change their location. What is this? He's over there somewhere. This broke when the backhoe came in to dig the pond. Blue Jay. I can hear the cheeping. So today is July sixteenth, seventeenth. So check out the flowers that are in bloom today. Yesterday, I missed them. I didn't come down. I can hear, oh, there he is up. No, it's a blue jay's way up at the top. But that little tick, 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 that's the indigo bunting. Whatever. aren't open all the way yet. Oh, that was yesterday's. That's it. Yesterday's. That was yesterday's. That might be today's. Oh my gosh, there's a big turtle in the pond. He just vanished. He's about seven inches across. Lots of activity for so early in the morning. I like my little dock. And this is the end of the day, Lilies. I'm going to plant willow down here, but I think maybe I should plant it on the other side. I already have it on that side. Hello, it's Nancy today. That's how you know it's me. If I don't have the flowers on, well, I'd be suspicious. Um, I was going to say, when I have these daylilies, and I want to find out how to keep them from dying, they only seem to have enough, enough energy when the sun is on them. 
but if the sun doesn't go down or if the light doesn't fade, they still close up after a certain number of hours. They're not just open because of the light. And when they start to close up, they dry up. Or when they, even if you pick off the petals, I've been doing experiments with them, trying to see why they close. If you pick off all the petals, they will, the petals themselves are drying up. If you float them in water, they'll still close, but not as tightly. The ones in the pond didn't close all the way. But they become see-through and um, anyway, they lose their oomph. Okay, so I was thinking now, my desire to maintain the life of a, of a daylily. I'm never going to change daylilies. Daylilies are going to do what daylilies do. But my desire to keep them. And it reminds me this morning, I was thinking about manna and how the manna fell in the wilderness and fed the children of Israel. And they lived for 40 years or something that way. Here's another deer up here. walked away and disappeared. Oh well. Okay, so um, the desire the desire to hold on to things and the manna is the same thing. They were taught about the desire to hold on to things. And if you gathered, you were supposed to gather enough for yourself and family to eat for the day. And if you didn't, if you gathered more than that, it would go bad. And so the children of Israel learned to have more faith in the Lord. That was the idea of why, why the manna would um, go bad every day. And so they learn to have more faith in the Lord and only pick for the day. Okay, my obsession with daylilies and wanting them to last more than a day. There's new ones the next day. It's just like manna, isn't it? If you think about it, the manna came every day. There's no need to hold on to any from yesterday until today. And it was all about faith, having faith in the Lord. And you know, Lilies and my desire to hold on to them. I know there'll be more the next day, but I want to have lots. I want to have more than what just the next day has. I want to have today's and the next day. And why? What am I going to do with them? There'll be new ones to replace the old ones. I love to look at them. I just love to look at them and see them and enjoy them. Anyway, these are, these are some interesting thoughts. I never thought of daylilies in connection with manna. So if you have any thoughts on this, any inspiration of your own, let me know. We do need to provide for the future. We don't live in, uh, we don't live in the field like lilies. Oh, the lilies of the field. Consider the lilies of the field. They toil not and spin. Or do they spin? They toil not, and yet something in all your glory is never something like that. Or whatever it was. I have to look that one up. Consider the lilies of the field. Now, aren't those field lilies then? Isn't that daylilies? Is that what they're talking about? Daylilies. Wow, I never thought about that before either. This is awesome. I'm getting some insight. Personal revelation. I love it. Alrighty then, 
I'll talk to you later. Bye. Hello, it's Nancy today. I wanted to say something about political correctness. To me, political correctness is about not offending other people. However, not offending other people is a good thing. You don't go around calling people fat. You just don't be mean, right? We're all taught that in kindergarten. You be nice to each other, you share your toys. You don't ridicule people because of what they look like or stuff. And it is it has gone much farther than that though. It has now gone so far that um you can barely mention um you can barely mention many things. Many things that we would have said I'm not driving anymore, so I can bring this up here. Um first of all, taking offense. When you take offense, it's because you're so full of yourself and you're just looking for something to upset you, I think. There's a way to not be offended. I think it's more important not to be offended than to be so careful about your words. I mean, there's obvious things that you shouldn't do, right? Like you shouldn't just be mean to people. You shouldn't be little people because of what they look like or... You know, if they limp or something like that. You should just not... You should be nice to people. But other than that, I think if your country... If somebody says something mean about your country, it doesn't mean anything about you. I mean, I, I'm an American living in Canada. I'm a Canadian now. But when I first came to Canada, people would say mean things to me because I was an American. I'm sorry, but... Americans don't have a very good reputation throughout the world. <clears throat> anyway, I was called a Yankee, and people were mean to me. And so for a long time, I would never admit to anybody I was American. I just wouldn't talk about it. But um, it didn't make me feel bad because I was born in America or in the United States, and I grew up as an American. It made me see that these people were very small-minded, that they had, you know, they were... They didn't, obviously, didn't know people. I mean, they were speaking, I guess, about what they knew because of the government and what they would see of the government down south. But now, should I have taken offense? Should I have thought, whatever you think when you take offense? I don't know. Should I have felt bad about myself? See, when you take offense, it... it the opposite of taking offense is saying, well, that's just whoever. That's just Sarah. That's just Mary. That's just Sally. That's just Rebecca. That's just whoever it is. That's just so-and-so. And they have their opinions. And it was very polite to say, but that's just the way people are. Some people are not that polite. It would solve a lot of problems if people did not take offense. But it has now become, socially, I cannot say to somebody else <clears throat> what I think about a certain war. Because, um, because my opinion of that country is um, not allowed. You're not allowed to have bad feelings toward different groups or ways of life or religions or you know it's it's good that we we accept everybody and everybody you know but <clears throat> <clears throat> to limit what we say to everybody and and to be ready to take offense that's the biggest problem is being ready to take offense the person who really needs to be careful is the person who is ready to take offense. There will always be offenders. There will always be people that will speak their mind, whatever it is. But if you take offense, it's you then that have the anger or the pain or the hurt or whatever. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. And then wishing for... Um, 
revenge. You know, it's like drinking poison and hoping for the other person to die. Well, taking offense is just such a silly thing to do. Count the source. Consider the source. If somebody says bad things about you, your religion, your lifestyle, anything about your cleanliness, your size, consider the source. It's not about you. It's about them. That's their opinion of people in the world everywhere. It has nothing to do with you. So I just wanted to tell you that. And that it's important that we do not be ready to take offense. That is so bad. And to consider, to imagine that the whole rest of the world should be, should not be allowed to say anything offensive in case I got offended. You know, I mean, how would it be if all Canadians were, it was illegal to say something bad about the United States? You know, what if it were bad for everybody to say something bad about any country? And it's gotten so bad now. I mean, there are many countries in the world where policies are really rotten as far as I'm concerned. And, and yet, you know, it's okay. Case in point. It's okay to hate the Palestinians, but it's not okay to hate the Jews. Just one point. Um, it's, you, you've got a, um, nobody's out there protecting the Palestinians. I mean, many Palestinians are Christians. They're good people. They're, whether they're Christians or not, they're many good people. But uh, it's okay to hate them. But you cannot hate Jews. You know, that is the big no-no. You cannot hate Jews. You cannot hate um, racial groups. You cannot hate... Um, I mean, I don't think hating anybody's any good anyway. But you're not allowed to say these things. And, and there's even hate laws in Canada that where you're not allowed to certain hate speech. We don't have free speech in Canada. You're not allowed to, you'll, you'll have to go before some committee if you say bad things about, what well, I don't know, whatever. But I think it's gone too far when nobody's allowed to say anything bad about you because you're going to get offended. I mean, look at the comments on my videos. Some people are really nasty. Most people are very nice. But the nasty people, should something bad happen to them? Are they... Should they be not allowed to say what they think? Everybody's entitled to feel what they feel and, I think, say what they want to say. It would be nice if they would be polite to me. Some people aren't. But anyway, I just think it's important to remember that this political correctness is so much about protecting the person that could take offense. Whereas we need to develop thick skins. If I use a walker and people look down on me because I am quote quote handicapped, that's not about, it's, I should have a thick skin. You know, if I'm fat and people make judgments about fat people, it's not about me. It's about them. They just say what they want to say. And I think it's important to get a thick skin. You don't have to outlaw people talking about you or, or your group, or your social economic group or your whatever part of whatever group you're in or whatever it is you do I don't think it's I don't think it's a good idea to I don't think it's good to be ready to take offense and political correctness is all about protecting people that want to take offense they're protecting people that I mean, remember back in the day, you used to tell jokes about different, you know, the Pol Polish jokes, or in Canada, the Newfie jokes. Well, those are very politically incorrect, you know. They're they're, but nothing bad was ever meant toward Polacks or for Newfies. It was just somebody to poke fun at, you know. I guess it's down there with bullying now. I think we need to have thick skins. Don't be offended by things. Don't be offended by a, a slight glance, something somebody may have inferred, something you thought they may have inferred. We're all too ready to take offense. And that's where wars start. You know, like that's really where wars start. People get offended because of something. So we got to stop the wars in our own lives. Okay, that's my two cents worth. I have no bad feelings about anybody in the world. Because it's not worth my time. It would make me tired.
would use up my energy. And Lord knows we need energy, don't we, Lord? I do believe. And he helps me have a lot of energy. Okay, see you later. Bye. Hello, it's Nancy today. This is my spot in my disaster of a renovated renovating of a house. Soon we're going to remove this window. And as you can see out there down lower are beautiful flowers. Would like to see if we could get this window, the new window down lower. I'm hoping. It would be nice if it would come down to there, but I think it has to go around. I don't think it can come below that. So <sighs> we'll see. And this is my view. I don't know if you can really see this view. It's yellow flowers everywhere. Good morning, it's Nancy today. So Willem and I are going to to Palmyra to the temple today. It's his birthday. Happy birthday to him. Happy birthday to him. Happy birthday, dear Willem. Happy birthday to him. <laughs> He's 65. Anyway, Mary Jane took me to the temple in Palmyra for my birthday when I was 50. So now we're going for his birthday when he's 65. We're going to go see the pageant. Imagine that. We're going to do it. And we get to go to the temple. And usually it's really hard to get into the sessions in the temple in Palmyra during pageant because 10,000 people come to the pageant. And they can only fit 100 people in a session. And so the sessions are all full. You're only allowed to do one session a day. Anyway, so we are going to we'll be in the 130 session. Isn't that cool? And I do hope that we can make it in time. There seems to be a bit of construction along this road. Oh, you know what I discovered with my flowers? Um, last night, the Samba Wilder flowers, the big ones, I've been calling them Priscilla's Rainbow. I don't think they are. I think they're just the head of Priscilla's rainbow. Anyway, the Samba Wilders, they were these two beautiful, I guess what color is that? A very, uh, sort of a, a, a cross between pink and dusty rose. Very light dusty rose. Very, very light. With purple and a green throat. Purple wing. Anyway, um, I guess they're winding this road, eh? So, um, so usually they close up completely at night. Well, last night, these two stayed open. Just beautiful this morning to have these two from yesterday and a new one opening already. Beautiful. So I think that leaving them on the plants is a good idea. Except that it's so nice to take them to the pond and let them float. <laughs> and then swim amongst them. Did you have something to say, Will? No. Are you sure? Absolutely. Nothing at all? I'm really grateful I have Will. was it you called me when you found me? Your, your chosen, your special, no, your, your, your true love. He said he found true his love. true love. That's right, true love. He went home after he found me, told everybody he found his true love. That was me. And I was, and it's been like a fairy tale ever since. Keep on those rose-colored glasses and you won't see any faults. He decided years ago that he was perfect and that no information to the contrary would change it. And so that means he's still perfect. How does it make you feel, Willem? Perfect. <laughs> Makes him feel perfect, he said. So 
that's I'll give you the latest little update on the house. So yesterday, in the weaving room, which is now kind of the library and the piano room, it was once the kitchen. Years ago, it was the kitchen. We moved the kitchen to the big room and the others in the back. That was a good idea. That was my idea, Willem. Remember that? Yeah. And then I went and picked up my friend Sue and I said she was going to come and help me. She brought her bucket and her mop. And when we got there, because we were going to move the kitchen, when we got there I handed her the blowtorch and <laughs> said, let's do the plumbing. We can do copper plumbing. I'll show you how. <laughs> Poor Sue was scared to death. Mm. These are beautiful rocks. This is nice. G-N-E-I-S-S. -S. Those are nice rocks. See those little tiny red wires going in them? To mm. blow them up. Blow up. That's what Daniel used to say when he would watch lemmings. We would play lemmings and you click on the little guys and they would blow up. And you would say, low up, low up, as soon as they would explode. Remember that one? Mm -hmm. Yes? I remember the lemming kind of thing blowing up, yeah. Didn't you remember saying, there, Daniel saying low up instead of blow up? Yeah. Well, that's because you were at work all day, I suppose, mm -hmm. providing for us so that we could play lemmings all day. It was a good game, lemmings. It was. Oh, it was guys. It's on the internet or something. Mm. Probably. It's a DOS game. It was a long time ago we had DOS. You can still run DOS. The command prompt. Oh yeah. Anyway, so um, I was going to give you the update before I so rudely interrupted myself. Um, so in that room, the piano room, weaving room. We've moved the two dressers and the counter. They're going to be in the living room, in the dining room part of the living room. And so we have a new window in there, 48 by 48 window, which is just lovely. It's so big and so beautiful. And I put my chair beside it, but I have to put my chair up on two two by fours in order to be able to see out the window. I should have had it down lower. But I didn't. Anyway, and so um yesterday he replaced the window. The li there's a little narrow window there beside the panel box. And so he replaced it so it's a wider window. It's really nice, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Do you see how much wider it is? And I made him put it lower and he had to move a bunch of wires. He didn't think he could put it lower. He said, no, I can only go down this far. And I said, well, no, no, move the wires. Go down lower. And so he did. I mean, what's a bunch of wires? So he moved them, and it worked. Isn't that awesome? We found a big, fat wire in the wall. It wasn't going anywhere. Anyway, so today he's going to work on the bathroom window. I do hope. But I put down the 48 by 36 window. I think that'll be nice and then we'll just put a curtain that we can close when we're going to be in there with nothing on in the bathroom. Also a little concern. I want it to be low enough that when you're sitting there, that you can look out the window. But that's where our compost goes. So do we want to see the compost? Sitting on a throne, looking at a compost. That's right. So maybe the compost will have to. Well, right now the compost is very high because we have all those grass that we've put on top of it. Oh, they're sure big, heavy trucks. To move around heavy rocks. <sighs> I've always 
wanted to survey. I've always wanted to be a surveyor. I think my bucket list, I should add surveying to that. I would love to spend a day with a surveyor, or even just a little bit, and just learn how to do it. That would be so cool. Is anybody a surveyor that would like to show me how to do that? July should be like three months long. I think Eden will be like July. Mind your P's and Q's. 